Jackie, I want to acknowledge you as well for answering Ian's question. So I want to give you the floor now to ask any questions or challenges that you're facing. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, so I found that sometimes with the logic aims, like I skip over a rule or something like that. And it's like very frustrating to me that like I'm skipping over rules and like if I get like a logical reasoning question wrong it's because like I misread the question like I have procedure down I'm studying like 12 to 15 hours a week um and I'm, I'm scoring in the, the upper 160s lower 170s but I'm not confident that that will transfer over on testing um especially because of nerves so like my biggest problem area is like making sure that I'm like reading carefully. But oddly enough, like that's, that doesn't happen in reading comprehension. I usually get that right. Okay. No, thank you for asking that. So you mentioned Jackie that you have procedure down. What does your procedure look like? So I, I read like the, the paragraph first, you know what I mean by the, the paragraph? Yeah. Yeah. So I read that. And then from that, I like try to take out like different rules. I know like that I need to like include, for example, like, numerical distribution or something like that right and then i go on to like each question and like for the first question on my paper i write one and then i write down like what that means and like variables and, and things like that and then I, I keep going but like for some reason i don't understand like sometimes i miss like a rule it's not even an inference it's, it's an actual rule how long do you spend on this setup uh, two to three minutes. Okay. I think most people spend around two to three minutes. I, I heard earlier, Ian and Dana were both saying around that amount of time. That's a reasonable amount of time. So where is that time largely being allocated? Inferences. Okay. So after you've drawn the main diagram, looking to connect the rules, mm -hmm. but it's possible that a rule gets left out or it's possible yeah. that a rule maybe gets- Or I don't even write it down. Okay. No, I don't, I'm not, I don't misinterpret the rules, but like sometimes- that, just... I don't even write it down. Okay. And I don't know. It's, it's not carelessness, but it seems like carelessness. So I don't know what's happening. Do you ever double check? Do you ever do things twice? Yes. But like I'm finding like after this week, I just did logic games. And like I'm finding that like sometimes I, I don't double check. Or like if I double, I don't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Well, let's, let's see this. Have you, have you ever gotten several questions wrong in a game because you missed a rule? Yeah. Okay. If I was going to remove $10,000 from your bank account every time you made a mistake on inter missing a rule, what would you do differently? I would check. I would double check. If I told you I was going to remove five points from your LSAT score because you missed a rule, what would you do differently? Double check. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. But I, I worry about like the amount of time that would take. And I know that like that's not necessarily rational. But it's a how worry. long do you how long do you think it would take? I don't know. Like I don't know. Like 10, 15 seconds? Maybe. Only one way Maybe to find more? out. But there's there's only one way to find out for sure. But right. you said also two to three minutes on the entire setup. Most mm -hmm. of that being on inference making after right. the process. So that means that the majority of two to three minutes, meaning at least a minute to a minute and a half, is solely on the inferences, meaning that it definitely takes less than a minute to a minute and a half to simply check the rules the first time. Mm -hmm. And probably a double check might go faster than the initial check because it is the second time. Right. Most right. of the rules you already have down. Most or all of them, maybe just one is missing. You also mentioned right. numbering the rules. Did, is, did I catch that correctly? Yeah, especially because like you can't write on the virtual screen. So like I, I always like make sure that I, I do my logic games on scrap paper because on the actual test, you're not going to be able to write on the actual like paper. And right. for me, like writing on paper is easier. Yeah. So I just make sure I do that. Sure, sure. Now you're saying rules. I assume you mean the indent, the indented parts under the paragraph. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, so... Those are, you're missing something from there, right? Yeah. What about thing, what about rules that are in that initial paragraph? Sometimes there are things buried in there too, right? 
Yeah, I mean, usually I'm able to catch them, but sometimes not. But like this week, I like spent a lot of time like making sure I could do that. Nice. Just drilling that. Good, good. Do you ever find yourself in a position where you could memorize the rules? I feel like that would take too much time and that's not necessary. Agreed. It's not necessary and it would take a lot of time. The reason I bring this idea up is just as a, as a concept, as a, as a game to play with yourself. Mm. Logic games really test your short-term working memory. They right. push beyond those limits, which is why it's so easy to make a mistake. If you think about it, what can we hold our, in our heads? A decent amount, but not that much. That's why phone numbers are chunked. You have area code, then three numbers, dash, four more numbers. They're separated, and it's hard to memorize lots of phone numbers. That's why we live with our phones. And the, the phone books are very useful, right, inside our cell phones. But they, the, the number seven numbers is probably the most you could reasonably get, which is why they put those dashes there to make it a little bit more manageable. Mm. Logic games, they're pushing beyond those limits as reasonable limits as well. And obviously all of it's extremely arbitrary and random. Right. So pushes beyond those limits, but as an exercise, it might be useful to see, could you diagram all the rules and then look away and write them all down without even looking? It's possible. I mean, maybe not the first time you see a game, but the third or fourth time, more reasonable. I mean, I could spit out the rules for a number of games just simply because I've done them so many times. They've actually, times they've actually gotten baked into my long-term memory, which is mm. useless in most contexts, but for the LSAT, it happens to be useful. But I want you to just play with that idea because it could be useful going through an entire game to not have to look back all the time. If at least a couple of rules were burned into your memory, that would be a useful thing to have going on. I don't know if I would, if I would trust my, myself with like nerves. Do you know what I mean? Like I might misremember that. Yeah, you might, you might. And obviously it's hard enough in the context of simply studying on your own time, let alone under the stress of a timed section, even more so when it's the real thing on test day. So I'm not mm -hmm. saying that you have to get there, but it could be a place to play. And that could be a place to see, are you getting everything down at the beginning? Because if you were trying to memorize them, I guarantee you would be reading those indented rules a lot more seriously. You would be checking right. through them a lot more and you would be extracting your interpretation of them as you were writing them down on scratch paper. Right. So simply a place to come from. If you were trying to enter one of these crazy memory competitions, how would you go about interpreting those rules? Just a place mm. to play. Also, just a, a follow-up question. How do you know like when it's better to like draw, just draw out like the inferences on like, like the number line, for example, versus like doing the templates? That's a whole separate question. And part of that simply comes down to judgment and familiarity. Okay. You got to play with that. If you want to see how I do that, watch my video explanations. I've got them for nearly 200 logic games on YouTube. Okay. I'll throw the, actually, I'll throw the link in the chat for those who aren't aware. These are also all on the YouTube channel. I have playlists devoted to them. Okay. Okay. And then... Sorry, sorry for uh, monopolizing. Don't apologize. Have... Don't apologize. Um, so like transferring that technique to logical reasoning and making sure I understand the question being asked, what's a good way to do that? You mean the question stem? Yes. Where don't you understand it being asked? In what context? Uh, um, like for example, sometimes like I, uh, I get, I, I mix up like the sufficient and the necessary assumption, but then when I look back, I'm like, oh, it's obviously this one. I don't know what I, what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got plenty of resources on that on the YouTube channel mm -hmm. as well as the blog. Just search difference, necessary assumption versus sufficient assumption. I've gone over it. Comes down to but that, the- But that's just an, an example. Like, yeah. More like, yeah. I mean, okay. I, could, I could say familiarity and I could say drilling, but right. I've also, for any specific example, I've got it covered in my resources. I've got it covered in the YouTube channel. I've got it covered on LSAT blog. I've got it covered more inside my courses, but it comes but it's down more to- about, it's more about misreading, not misunderstanding. Misreading. Also, I'll say the same thing. What would it, ta what, what would it take for you to, trade it, to treat it seriously enough where you slow down if there were consequences associated, which of course there are. I'm not gonna sugarcoat right. that. Right, okay. Like slow down and like be more patient with like what's going on and like double check and things like that. Yeah. 
Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Of course. And if that doesn't work for you, circle back to me and we'll find another solution for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you for playing full out. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.